Hey, how you doing? It's Mr. Clifford. This is ACDC Econ. We're talking about monetary policy. What I have for you is I have three different graphs, and we're going to connect the supply and demand for money to the aggregate demand that you learned in the last unit. Right now, here's the demand and the supply. We saw it in the previous video. Okay, watch it over again if you haven't seen it. The Fed sets the supply, people set the demand, and it sets an interest rate, which is right here, equilibrium interest rate. Now, that interest rate right, determines the quantity of investment that takes place in our economy. This middle graph shows you investment. Remember, investment is spending by businesses. A high interest rate, firms do not want to borrow money, and therefore they don't want to expand and grow and buy machinery and stuff like that. At a low interest rate, they want to do those things. Now, the connection between these two graphs is the interest rate. The connection between these two graphs is that investment is a component of aggregate demand. The question now is, if we have a gap, right, what do we do to this graph, how does it affect that graph, and how is it going to close the gap? Right now, on your piece of paper, I want you to draw this thing out. I want you to draw the change here, show the change here, and see if you can show what happens here. And more importantly, show the chain link of events and make sure you say each part that leads to the change in aggregate demand at the end. All right? Good luck on this. Hopefully you understand it. All right, you know what's going to happen? The first question is what kind of gap is that, right? That is a recessionary gap. We're currently producing less than our full employment GDP. Well, if we have a recession, what do you do to the money supply? The answer is increase, right? Increase the money supply with lower interest rates. So we'll call this interest rate one. Interest rate one over here will lead to an increase in investment, right? An increase in investment would increase aggregate demand, shifting the whole curve to the right, leading to a higher price level and leading to greater quantity. That would close the gap and that would solve our problem. Now, when it comes to the test, you might not actually have to draw this, but you have to be able to explain it. First thing we said is the supply of money. What do we do? We increase the supply of money. That would lead to a series of events and you can't skip any link inside this chain. All right? So an increase in the money supply led to a decrease in interest rates. A decrease in interest rates led to an increase in investment, right? And more investment increased aggregate demand because investment is a component of aggregate demand. Now, that would increase price level and it would also increase the quantity or the output in the economy, closing the gap. Bonus round. Now it's time to talk about how they increase the money supply, right? There's only three different things the Fed can do to increase my supply. We learned it in the last video. This is the three tools of the Fed. Right? The first thing they could have done is they could have lowered the reserve requirement. They could have lowered the discount rate. Or is it buy or sell? Do you remember? Buy or sell bonds? Well, the answer is they could buy bonds. If any of these three things happen, that would cause this to happen. Right? And this whole thing added together is called monetary policy. Now, the next video, we're going to do it over again, except we're going to switch it, all right? Till next time.